now. Hello everyone, thank you for coming back and watching us again for our Star Trek Adventures Nighthawk. Uh, no real announcements this week, so I just want to say welcome to the players, and I believe that we might have ourselves a captain's log. Yes, we do. As soon as I open up Roll20 again, the other just closed on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally not scuffed, by the way. I know what I'm doing. I'm the captain. Captain's log supplemental. Let me look this up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Captain's log started 82463.8. Following the Nighthawk's encounter with the Sphere, all crew members have been recovered and are accounted for, myself included. I've since been told that because of my physiology, the incident left me in a state similar to heavy intoxication. Similar to its standard effects, it has left me with a muddled sense of time, which has subsequently begun, begun returning to normal. During my absence, the crew launched a rescue operation and appears to have performed admirably. Reviewing the mission reports, it is concerning that the Sphere was able to download data from our computer banks, an act of which I hope does not become a potential liability. Still, for a new crew to face this challenge, I am both impressed and, of course, thankful. Deep Space 15, otherwise known as Cerberus Station, first encountered the Togolau species on started 82355.4 about a month ago. According to intelligence they've gathered, they appear to be a collective fungal species and inhabit planets within the Vitar's Imperium. I have determined that gathering greater intelligence about them is critical, which is why the Nighthawk is headed to the Planet 9, located in Sector Zeta-03 of the Expanse. The colony aboard Cerberus Station was, was non-hostile, and they appear to be mistaken as a plague by the Imperium. 9 is allegedly a former Imperium world, so gaining additional historical, medical, and scientific information without risking a direct confrontation with the Imperium is of great value. Although the Togolau appear parasitic, I'm personally interested to uncover more of the effects of this joint species, being part trill myself. Finally, in hopes that Starfleet's mission may continue within the Expanse, keeping track of the ramifications of our actions is essential, so I hope not to uncover any hidden mysteries from Deep Space 15's prior ex enterprise. And log. Well said, Captain. Uh, so, uh, as we get close, so it is roughly a two days have passed since your encounter with the Sphere, and you guys are nearing the pla the solar system containing the colony known as Ix, or as the Captain has called it, Nine, depending on your pronunciation. Uh, so. Before we start plot, I'm just going to check to see if there's anything that individuals would like to do. So let's start with Lieutenant Commander Thashran. I'm just, uh, did we actually take a lot of data on the um, fungal species while we were there? Uh, there was some data on the fungal species, but not much, with, not much within the sphere itself. Uh, all the fungal, all the data you have from the fungal species is from... Uh, Starbase from its encounter with the Starbase Deep Space 15 about a month ago. I'll shoot to be um, kind of taking a look at that. Uh, funny enough, I actually escaped my parents who are all into fungal evolution. So who knew that that might actually come back in handy once again, even though I, I hated that at the time when I was a child. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you are currently researching if them. Not much in the way of new discoveries at the moment uh there was just a small colony that helped that was found aboard a derelict starship that was salvaged um a few cells apparently survived living in zero g and zero atmosphere and then once they were back on board star deep space 15 under proper quarantine they began to grow and with a little help from their uh, doctor hologram were taught how to evolve and communicate okay fair enough i mean regardless of how much information there is it's always interesting learning about uh, different cultures and species mm -hmm. uh, lieutenant commander helsing kind of looking over the same type of reports and i'm kind of just amazed that like some type of vegetative board where they can their, their spores basically assimilate anybody they come upon and the doctor evolve them to a type of sentience? Not quite assimilate per se. It was more like trying to integrate. 
would be the, probably the better term. Yeah, they use the gel packs if memory serves. Mm -hmm. That's correct. They their first their first uh, experience with language happened after the doctor threw a uh, bioneural gel pack at them, and they absorbed knowledge by integrating with it. That's incredibly weird and and cool. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey. It makes me wonder. I think Chalmers might be right about AIs and holograms. But exactly what I was thinking. My my dear old Galen is going off doing that cowboy medicine. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. Lieut Lieutenant Commander Kenor, welcome aboard. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Great. Uh, so the ship is just pulling up to the um, mm -hmm. Vitar's planet of Ix. Um, going over all the data, uh, what is it that you would be like to do, if anything, at this time? Um, you said it's a planet where we're trying to find data. Correct. Uh, see, uh, learn about uh, more, learn more about the Vitars Imperium, and possibly the Togalau species that had been infesting these colonies. I think under this circumstance, she would be on the bridge, kind of interested in uh, in all that intelligence. Okay. Go. Let's Just kind of standing in the back, or standing wherever her console is, uh, watching, watching the facing forward, watching the view screen, or watching. All right, let's put you over here then. Uh, Commander Bashir. I am cannot wait to get my hands on some samples. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm on the bridge. Very well. And Captain Singral, anything before we kick the plot off? Well, uh, before we kick the plot off, I'd actually love to give the bridge to Bashir and head down to uh, Sick Bay. Okay, we're heading down to Sick Bay. Sorry, did I hear that right, Sick Bay? That's correct. Okay, even though the doctor's on the bridge? Even though the doctor is on the bridge. Okay. <laughs> so we're here. Whoa! The doctor appeared on the. <laughs> Poof. Gone. She's a hologram. Burnout. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they told me there's no hollow emitters on my ship. <laughs> here we go again. No. But, uh,. As I as I walk into sick bay, I'll you know even though the doctor is on the bridge, I'll greet the other nurses and medical staff on file, and I'd like to pull up my own personal medical record. Okay. So doing so and looking over that, I'd like to actually s compare and s read what the uh, read what the report was that the doctor wrote after my recovery. Okay. Um. Now, how caught up are you with uh, last session, uh, Kenor? I know you missed that one. I am not caught up at all. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to give the basics and feel free to flavor as you desire. Uh, let's see. So the captain and much, roughly 25% of the crew were caught up in a temp in uh, bile suspension liquid, while various um, medical instruments were inserted into various orifices to gather evidence of DNA, um, other and whatever and other biological readings. Uh, there was an odd chemical reaction between the host and the symbiote, as the symbiote was apparently un unaffected by the whole thing, but the captain was. Uh, this led to some what appears to be a biological defense mechanism to protect the host's, for lack of a better term, sanity during the process. Uh, as it appears that you have made a full recovery after some time to, uh, quote, sober up, and the doctor doesn't believe that you will have any further um, side effects. All right, that's uh, excellent. But actually, um, I'm not sure if we actually discussed this, and that might have been my fault, but I'm not joined. Oh, my sincere apologies. You're half trill. Or I'm half trill. My, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going off my own trill experience, because everyone seems to like playing joined trill. 
So, not me. My apologies. <laughs> then I'll, allow me to re, allow me to redact <laughs> most some of that. It was a biological difference in the brain where the um, Bajoran side, or not Bajoran, the Beta Z side, um, released some powerful uh, neuroprotective agents uh, that, while it, it protected your overall sanity, it left your brain um, missing a lot of short term memory and upon becoming a quote unquote, uh, well, once you were rescued. You were quite delirious for some time, disoriented, and uh, nauseous. Okay, very well. So I'd actually like to, you know, in uh, in relative privacy, because, you know, I'm not interacting with the other nurses here, I'd like to make do some own investigation. I'd like to compare the results of my physiology, uh, well, the readings that were taking of me after my recovery, based on other joint chill and other joint species that we have knowledge of in the Federation. Uh, so you mean, now you actually mean the word joined and not half in this instance? I actually mean okay. joined. So that would be an insight plus medicine, and let's say that is a difficulty of three. Okay, day. I don't have focus for this, so that is going to be fun. Well, the ship can assist. Yeah, ship ship can assist with um, computers plus medicine. Someone wants to roll. Ship. Right. I got it. Computers and medicine. Nope. All right. Uh, so, Captain, you're you're not able to see any major changes in your current physiological state compared to your previous physio physiological state and any comparison to other joined species primarily the trill but i'm sure there's other symbiotic races within the federation or at least encountered by starfleet uh you don't seem to see any further um uh, any other further similarities if that's what you're looking for okay the second thing that i'd actually like to look for is a comparison uh, between other joined and or uh, subjected telepathic individuals to external house, whether that may include the Borg or other parasitic life forms. So basically I'm looking to see if other telepathic species such as Vulcans or Beta Zeds and what exactly their reaction is and whether or not they, uh, what faculties they keep ah. during the process. Very well. Um, okay, so that, um, a quick look through uh, various med uh, authorized medical logs, or personnel logs, however you wish to flavor it. Um, most telepathic species are, or most, most telepathic species, when they encounter a hive mind, such as the Borg or other such creatures, um, typically either are receive sort of a large a lar eh, a loud amount of static um, within their telepathic minds sort of dulling it to other senses and and that's the best case scenario in some other in other cases depending on proximity or number of beings present it can become quite overbearing to the point of disability temporary disability all right then I understand so moving off of that mm -hmm. uh, I'd actually like to move further into the doctor's office and at least, you know, after I move into the doctor's office and request some privacy, I'm going to state, well, computer, voice authorization, Segrel Apple One, deactivate all listening devices in this room. Request acknowledged. Listening devices have been disabled. And just because right. I think it's amusing, um, as the captain walks into the office, uh, Lieutenant Commander Knorr is going to receive a call from uh, Ensign Ira Zinn, the head nurse. Uh, doctor, just in case you're aware, want to know, the captain has taken up residence in your office. Uh, for a second, an almost imperceptible second, there's a pause as she 
kind of tilts her head to the side and considers what um, the ensign says. And then almost as if, like, remembering, oh, yeah, I need to reply. She taps her combat and says, uh, I will be there momentarily. Give him the privacy he needs. Kanor out. Captain so, Dunks. and then I'll head there. Okay, we'll give you a couple minutes. Uh, so, Captain, what is it you wish to look for? Specifically, I'm going to use my command, my uh, command authorization, and my Starfleet intelligence to scan further files mm-hmm. and see if there is actually any intel or information, and ask the computer to speculate as well upon the possibility of having some sort of external or uh, recessive biological system that could compensate for the loss that these uh, telepathic and or joint species lose during their assimilation. Okay. <clears throat> um, so you're looking to see what happens or how someone gets their telepathic back? Is that? Yes. Okay. Uh, so... Um, let's run another, let's look for so, insight medicine, or, sorry, yes? No, I was going to say, I didn't mean it, well, I uh, wanted to interrupt and just say, anything that is along the lines of whether it's actually, uh, shutting off other portion, portions of the body and or compensating with, uh, biomechanics or possible implants, things okay. of those nature, things of that nature. Understood. Okay, uh, this would be another... Uh, insight medicine, please. Uh, again, difficulty three. The comp- the ship can assist. Anybody else want to take the ship, or? Ooh, uh, you got it open. Go ahead. All right. Now I, I'm sure I've uh, I'm sure you've told me this once before. Where's the third dice coming from, Sengal? Oh, man, that is still. The uh, the sheet itself screwing up with my browser. Oh, is that so? Okay, so yeah. just two One successes. The, just two successes. Okay. Hmm. Nope. <clears throat> um, somebody else might want to do the ship next time. <laughs> <laughs> my mojo's gone. Uh, uh, so, Captain, the ship is. Uh, warning: A- access to, further access to med- to medical databases has been denied due to uh, security lockouts placed by the chief medical officer. And at that point, Lieutenant Kenor walks into the office. Or walks into Sickbay, I should say. Um, she's going to walk... Let's, let me look at the map. She walks in and uh, immediately just stands... And is the door closed to the office? I believe the captain closed the door, yes. yes okay. Sure. Um, and for, for, as far as the ship is concerned, what does she have to do to open it? Does she have to just walk up, or does she have to hit some buttons? Or I would suspect that by saying command off or unlock door authorization, chief medical officer would be sufficient within your own sick bay. Okay, yeah, figured as much. Um, yeah, if she was any other species but Vulcan she might actually knock, but I don't think she would do that. So she's going to say that. She's going to say, computer, uh, override voice authorization, uh, Kenor Alpha 2. And then when the door opens, she's just going to stand. She's not going to enter. She's just going to stand there with her hands behind her back and and say, um, is it morning or afternoon or evening? Player discretion. Okay. Uh, well, I assume if we're on a mission, it's probably, and we're yeah. we're approaching the planet. You said. Yeah. So I'm guessing sometime during Alpha Shift. So morning okay. or afternoon. Yeah, she says she uh, with her hands behind her back. She gives him uh, a look and says, "Good afternoon, Captain. May I help you with anything?" Ah, oh, yes, Doctor. I was wondering when you were, when you'd arrive. Please take a seat, and I will actually stand up from the doctor's seat and allow her to sit down. Okay, she kind of gives you a perked brow look, as Vulcans do, and nods, and then goes and... T- so, I will, after she sits down, I'll then close the door again, and I assume that the listening devices are still deactivated. You At have, least I hope so. You have not reactivated them, so yeah. 
Okay, then. So I'm really, and I'll ask, so doctor, what are your preferences? What are the things that you like to do? She has this look <laughs> like, it's a kind of a human look where she's just looking like, like briefly looking around at the desk as you know, like for an escape hatch or something. But then she looks <laughs> back up to you and she says, I believe we have had this conversation before. However, I don't think that is pertinent to whatever you're doing in the office. Actually, it is very pertinent, and you are right. We have had this conversation before. And I'll say again like I did, I'll say before again like I did back then. It's pertinent because I'm asking the question. And I don't, I'm not saying that in a, out of character, I'm not saying that in a term of authority, like I did say last time. I'm saying that in, in a form of casual communique because I'm leading somewhere. So anyway, I'll continue. Go ahead. She uh, she was just gonna, she's just gonna nod and she says, as far as my recreational activities, um, I like uh, generally speaking uh, art and you know music, writing, things of that nature. And then she looks up. She she's still looking at you, but she has a more. She leans forward and puts her uh, interlocks her fingers on the desk and gives you like a more pointed look with slightly more, you know, slightly narrowed eyes. And she says, what about you, Captain? What do you like to do? Well, everything that I like to do is on my record. However, I do enjoy minor recreation. I wasn't ever really a large sports guy. And even though we are in this large federation and I researched a bunch of other cultures, recreational activities, baseball on ancient earth was really not one of those things that I could ever see myself playing. But honestly, oh, that's beside the point. The reason why I ask this question is because outside of other methods of communication, there's no real way for you to know what the other person's interests are without finding some method of communication with them. Isn't that correct? That is correct. However, I'm still struggling to find out or to discern what that has to do with you being in the So in that case, I will actually go ahead and glance and wave my hand to uh, the computer panel so the doctor can actually look at the information that I was looking for. And in that case, I'll continue. So the species that we're going to investigate on our current mission is parasitic in nature. Pos potentially, that's a word that you could use for them. They are a collective fungal species to as much as we know. And even though Cerberus station encounters them, with them has yielded little collective information, uh, there's still much to be done. But really what concerns me is that the other methods of communication that we may not necessarily have available to us. You're Vulcan, you're telepathic, correct? And in that sense, there are other telepathic members of, of the Federation, such as, you know, the Beta Zeds, most likely. Well, most assuredly, I myself am half Trill, and I am half Beta Zed. I do possess empathic abilities, but not telepathic. But some would actually say that telepathic abilities allow you a greater sense of knowledge about whoever you're interacting with. Now, Doctor, I don't mean to scare you and try to lead you along the lines of saying I'm looking to genetically augment myself with telepathic abilities. That's not why you... What I did really, not assume, sir. <laughs> what I'm really looking for is the ability to actually... Comp <laughs> what I'm really looking for <clears throat> is the potential to compensate in situations where either the crew is injured or... Unlike, in unlikely scenarios where it may necessarily have to be forced. You want to use a, your, your mental abilities in a more active manner? No, I don't. Doing so would be incredibly illegal and against the values of the Federation. I do not wish or value you to gain such abil abilities in such an unnatural way. But it doesn't help me from being curious curious in other ways and how exactly I have the ability to communicate with people that I know so little about. Even though I'm supposed to be empathic, I'm supposed to be able to read humanoids and other, other species. And normally that's easy, but I'm also half trill. 
I have the ability to be joined, but this, it's, uh, I've been told that it's lesser. And I can't help but think to myself that even if I were to live a life like that, would I actually be able to read the emotions of a life of a lifetime of eight or nine people before? <laughs> would I be able to actually understand their emotions? And if I can't be able to understand myself or others of that nature, how am I supposed to understand a collective? I see. Um, well, there are, perhaps you're, perhaps you should uh, look at it from a non-empathic point of view. There are such as the Zach Dorn and even many humans uh, have the ability to understand others without needing empathic or telepathic abilities. If you could simply learn that, then it, perhaps the empathic na your empathic nature would uh, greatly benefit you. Otherwise, it's almost a hindrance. Well, well said, Doctor. And I believe you're approaching the crux of my point. Now imagine that it's not necessarily me that we're talking about. And imagine that some other hostile species that we're trying to communicate with on our mission. What would you say to them? And this is me out of character trying to... So you're saying if, if the situation was reversed, if the, it was the hostile species with, with your conundrum... That's correct. That's exactly that's what I'm asking you. Okay. Uh, she says. She actually she's kind of closes her laptop, stands up, and ret replaces her hands behind her back as she slowly starts to pace, and she kind of thinks for a moment, and then says, "I would probably give them the same advice, but more than likely, if an entire species is hostile." yet they have the ability to feel the pain or to feel the emotions of others, there's probably a greater issue there. In any case, just some other things that I wanted to spitball and run past. I appreciate your time, Doctor. And I yours. Well, computer, deactivate all listening devices since this room. I'll just take a stroll on out. Listening device. So I don't know. Oh, sorry. I don't. I don't. I don't know if it's me as a player, but I. I. I don't understand why that conversation had to be like so secret. It's the captain. He's allowed to be as secretive as he wants, I guess. Well, I think Kanor, in any in any normal situation. I mean, like I, I've only played her once before, so I'm trying to get in her mind. But I think she would have, she would think that, or she might think that, at least in the at the beginning of that conversation, that that the captain just had no trust for her whatsoever, or respect, or something like that. Because I mean, that whole situation to her seemed unnecessary. You are more than welcome to follow up at a at a later time. But awesome. at the moment, you're getting a call from the bridge that you have arrived outside the X solar system. Oh yeah, she's going up there. And we are going to cut ourselves to this sector. So... Um, you don't ob you obviously don't drop out of warp right by the planet because that would be unintelligency. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, the planet or the so the solar system you are entering contains five planets circling around a class G star, which is the same as our Sol uh, sun. Uh, the first planet, um, orbiting very close to the sun, is a hot Jupiter type. Uh, class S, so a very large planet. <clears throat> class two, or the second planet is a class B, so a Mercury planet similar to Mercury. Uh, third planet is class G. It's a geocrystalline 
uh, planet. So basically, it's a planet that has just recently finished being all volcanic and active and is now going through its cooling phase. Uh, class four, uh, Planet 4 is uh, X prime, or just X, or as the captain calls it, Planet 9. Uh, it is a Class H, so it's a desert planet with very thin atmosphere. And that's the one that's currently showing up on screen. Uh, the final planet, um, having a very distant orbit be uh, than the rest, is Class Q, which is a variable type planet. So its readings are constantly shifting depending on the mood of its core. So do we see all this like debris and ships and uh a curse yeah, once you start a more thorough uh, investigation as you approach from the planet system. Uh, the planet X has three asteroidal moons, which are not to scale of the ships. Everything here is just for... The moons are obviously larger than the ships, but have to make scale so Have to fill out the scene somehow. <clears throat> and there is a great number of Vitars ships in orbit. Um, many of them are similar to the class that the that was detected by the Cerberus class, or the Cerberus station. So that'd be these cruisers up here. Uh, but you're also picking up uh, numerous other uh, sort of destroyer size class, so smaller class uh, ships. And then the largest is um, one scale larger than yours, so class six, or scale six, which would be this one here. There is a you are detecting one satellite in orbit that is transmitting a lot of data out system, probably back to the Vitar's homeworld. Well then, I'll actually go ahead and ask for suggestions here. I mean, I have a plan of action that I have in mind, but I want to hear what the rest of the crew thinks about at least just a wrap. Um, from a security standpoint, it looks like the Vitars really want to find out what's going down on that planet and keep tabs on it. Not to mention is they came in with a fairly hostile attitude about these plants. Curious if the whole plan, we don't know what happened after they take in that species back. Well, we do know that, again, you know, the Vitaris Imperium isn't necessarily too friendly with the Togolau, at least con since they consider them an infestation. So, taking the species back, possibly just in a way to find a way to more controllably easily eradicate it as a possibility. Well, my suggestion would be hail them. <laughs> I'm, I'm all in favor of, of, of saving these uh, fungaloid species if they are in, in actually in need of assistance. I'm not necessarily too keen on revealing ourselves yet. I was more thinking along the lines of uh, wait and see, but I was thinking about a um, proper stealth operation, uh, at least to the planet's surface, intercept, some, intercept the uh, transmissions, see if we can get an away, um, away team, uh, prepare an away team, excuse me, I cannot talk, prepare an away team um, in a similar guise of other Vitar's Imperium speed to see if we could at least get a better understanding of what's going on on the planet's surface. So if we could have the ability to scan for that without being detected, or gather some images of, you know, the species, at least on the ships and on the planet surface that are currently in the area, I'd uh, like to do some checks for that. Okay. Um, so the question is, how do you wish to scan? Or from which vantage point do you wish to get in as close as possible while not be 
under your camouflage systems, or do you wish to try to engage your cam camouflage systems and get as close as you can? Or do you just want to fire probes and hope for the best? Uh, can we fire shielded probes and hope for the best? Oh, do you also, also have a security? I'll you know get my security suggestions on that. Well, they also have that transmission that's being beamed out from that satellite, so we could tap in on that and see what they're beaming out. I say we use the camouflage and hide by the one in or by one of the asteroids. Sit, sit and listen for a little bit first. Do scans, then slowly ramp it up from there. Learn the landscape. Yeah, I'm kind of in favor of the, of that plan of attack. Um, so yeah, as long as we could uh, make sure we can scan for possible planetary defenses, because if our probes are detected, um, if we decide to launch them, these ships have the ability to probably, you know, destroy them, but I, I want to know more about, like, the planet itself. And, and if, like I said, if there are any planetary defenses that we should be aware of. Okay. Um, sure, I you all know that uh, he's, he's understanding of all the, the prudence and all the caution, but is secretly very disappointed in, in our lack of um, a, a adventurous spirit. I would think that the captain could pick up on that because he's an empath. Yeah. Um, we'll go boldly soon enough. He's practically say, just we know, a seat. Come on, let's just do it. Let's go. We know we're, they're a uh, warlike race, so <laughs> I wouldn't rather make that. Okay. So am I understanding then you plan to engage camouflage systems and hide out by one of the moons? Engage camel. Yep, exactly. Let's uh, go ahead and hide. All right. <clears throat> uh, so with the camouflage systems engaged, and I refuse to call it a cloaking device because those are illegal. <sighs> so your first test is going to make um, finding, the, getting close enough to the planet so that you can actually hide. Um, so that will be a control plus con check. And the ship can assist with structure plus engines. And this is going to be a difficulty three. And sadly, uh, Lieutenant or Lieutenant Erkin has requested some personal time off to um, fix some deficiencies in the uh, his personal attack shuttle that he's calling it. So you have a, a stand-in helmsman. I think the captain will talk to him about fixing his personal deficiencies in his work ethic next time. <laughs> Entirely possible. Uh, so if Crew someone... evaluations. Yeah. yeah. Surprise. So if someone could Don't please... Don't worry, guys. We saved the captain's life. That's a giant plus on those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if someone could please pick up Jefferson Davis, who happens to be the, sh the backup shuttle pilot... Uh, and this is going to be a difficulty of two. You said the ship was... Uh, structure plus engines. Structure. Okay. That's can do both of those are systems. So is it... So so structure is it... engineering? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, structure plus con. con. And then oh, yeah. Jefferson is control plus con, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Jefferson. Okay, so that's your first point go. of momentum, I believe. So that is three successes. <clears throat> you slide. Not bad, backup pilot. You're already getting us uh, further ahead than last time, since we're, we're not getting shot at. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good start. That was a good uh, pace. Yeah. Uh, Let's continue that. Because um, someone keep track of momentum, please. And then you've. The you find you get your way you slide in gr quite gracefully uh, through several. Uh, they're not quite civilian ships, but they're more like military transport vessels, uh, flying to and from the planet, as well as a poorly erected uh, cordon of all the other sh of all the other ships. Um, you do notice that their guns are pointed outward, not inward. 
and I'm just going to place the Nighthawk by one of these planets here. Ooh. Or planetoids, I should say. <clears throat> um, next up is going to be a couple sensor scans. Uh, so what is it that you're looking for with these particular scans? I'm really interested in the that data beam they have going out from the satellite. Okay. Uh, so this I is planetary life form. Okay, so let's run two sets of scans here. So each of you will roll me uh, as each of you are interested in separate things. Um, if you could each roll me a sensors or nope a uh, re reason plus science and I will allow a reason plus engineering scan for the satellite if you wish uh, each is going to be difficulty two and the ship can assist with each right for from security for that satellite mm -hmm. And uh, shipboard tactical systems as a focus? I'll allow it this time. If you had anything on signals intelligence, that would be more appropriate. Cryptography? I'll allow cryptography. Okay. Okay, so that is two. So between you and the ship, you get the two successes you need. Oh, the ship oh, was a, a previous one. Oh, whoops. Not paying attention. My bad. Uh, okay, so that's... So, what would the ship be for this one? Uh, ship would be sensors plus science. <clears throat> okay. Ooh. Okay. Um, I will be... I can take that... I can allow that to succeed at cost if you'd like to give me the threat point. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. Well, hold on. Let me <laughs> scroll through talents real quick to see if we, I actually need to go do that. Rather avoid that if possible. Aww. I like our GM, but not that much. I'll allow... Uh, can I throw in some retroactive advisor here? And I'll say I just commanded him to scan so he can reroll this D20. Oh, why not? Oh, thank you. Okay, so Liam Helsing can reroll one of one die for reason engineering. All right. <clears throat> There's there the we stress. go. I follow direction well. I'm so proud. <laughs> you, should keep, you should keep both eyes open when you, you do your scans. Uh, so what your interest, what what you are first interested in is that it's not actually encrypted data. At least not what you're familiar with. It's not a typical uh, communication scan or communication stream. Um, Lieutenant Kenor, um, out of curiosity, you pull the, str the signal up on your panel and you realize almost immediately that it's a p series of brain waves, like thousands of them being... <laughs> You all right there? And we... Huh? Yeah, I'm fine. Sorry okay. about that. That's okay. Uh, yeah, so this station is transmitting or receiving uh, thousands of brainwave patterns. And we already know that they're telepathic or no? Uh, the Vitars are not telepathic, but you do know that they da they can download their brains into digital storage and transfer them between uh, bodies. Okay, that's right. Um, so... I she hmm i mean as far if she if she know if she knows that they can do that then this might just be another way of them doing that so i don't think she'll she'll let the captain and the crew know like oh they're brainwave patterns thousands of them but she's not going to be like super worried about it i think that i, I mean yeah it's is abnormal for them but it might be no, really normal for these guys <laughs> and one other thing for Lieutenant Helsing, you'd notice that all the satellite's basically acting as a relay, so it's focusing the uh, brainwave patterns and beaming them to a domed city 
uh, on the planet's surface. Uh, I should say it is the only domed city. Um, at this point, let's see what the Commander Bashir happens to find with his role. So this would be a reason science or... And holy cow, there's already one degree of success, and the ship can roll again. If uh, the same thing. Ah, uh, yes, please. Sensor science. And that's one degree of success. So, um, because the ship succeeded, you get one point of momentum that you can spend to ask questions. Uh, what you get looking at the planet is there is one domed city, as I've previously mentioned, that is receiving the signals coming from the satellite. Uh, you're also picking up several underground cavernous cities, and that's where the uh, life forms seem to be. Uh, all in all, uh, you're picking up roughly one million Vitars life signs, most of which are located in two of the five uh, underground caverns, with a small smattering in, in the domed city. Um, you're also picking up a deg lots of, well, it's hard to d discern proper numbers, but the other three um, underground caverns are covered in the Togalau life sign. Fungal. Fungal growths. You're also picking up a similar life sign in orbit, which is this one right up top here. So one of these ships does not look like the other. And this ship in particular is, again, radiating the fungal life sign, just at a scale 4. Okay. So, that, just to clarify, like that, that one ship is the fungal one, and, and all the other ships are the um, other guys? That's correct. Okay, Vitars. Yeah, oh, one ship is Togolau, the rest is Vitars, and of course, your ship is special. Is does so good. Oh, uh, I was just saying, they, is, is it actually easily visible? Like, are they do the ships actually see them, or are they, they just do. like hiding? Okay, yeah, huh. they do. It's in a yeah. it's in a geostationary orbit over top of the planet. Okay, so it's not trying to hide from them. Nope. Does, does it bear resemblance to the one that Cerebus Station let the Togolau leave in? No, the Togolau that was encountered did not have a spaceship of their own. They left as a humanoid thing under escort with uh, contained within the Vitars ship. Uh, this particular ship is completely new to you guys. Yeah, because when they first found them, they found them on food storage, uh, just like a parasitic organ. Yeah. In they... that Scorpio ship. That's right. Correct. Yeah. I love it when players pay attention to the stuff I, the stories I tell. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that I'm supposed to be doing right now. Huh. <laughs> Some of us are not reading updates for San Diego Comic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <coughs> sorry. Okay. Right. So, uh, oh, go on. Uh, no, that's pretty much it. So you have one question that you could ask as a science officer, and one question you could ask from the momentum. If you wish. Did you guys want to ask about the Dome City, or do you want to ask about the Tokelau ship? I want to ask about the, the ship. I'm very curious. Okay. Yeah, if you as I say, if you have a suggestion, I will take it. Yeah, I want to... The, the relations with the Tokelau, at least at that point, I've kind of... I'm very interested to see how that relationship works out. Or so if we can glean anything about that with it, with with the ship itself, uh the more the better for me. Okay. Uh the the tactical situation of the ship is you do not appear you do not uh read anything that would be similar to shields, weapons or even engines for that matter. Uh it just appears to be one large colony that has assumed the size and configuration of a starship. There is small oh. pods, for lack of a better term, 
that seem to be uh, streaking up and down towards the planet. Uh, these pods are also Togolau. Uh, watching long enough, uh, you get to see one of the pods zip up and sort of not so much as dock with the ship, more like merge into the ship. Um, as uh, the fleet... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the fleet is in a holding pattern around the planet, uh, but there are two uh, the cruisers that are definitely within weapons distance of the Togolau vessel. And you are detecting a decent amount of standard communications going between ships. Uh, most of it is unencrypted, mostly just, you know, ship status reports, current orders, etc. But right now, they seem to be giving the Togolau ship the benefit of a doubt. So, I have a very bad idea that popped into my head that I want to uh, Yeah, me in. too. Uh oh, oh I, 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 I love that idea. idea. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Captain's prerogative, mine first, nope. and then yours. <laughs> but, uh,. <laughs> I want to specifically this question, you know, goes out to everybody in the bridge, but I'm really turning to, you know, my first officer and security officer for this. So what if we tried something similar to Cyber Station? I mean, after we identify um, and we gather more information, you know, about the current situation, of course, but if we, if we wanted to keep our presence, um, you know, to a minimal, what if we beamed over a bio neural gen gel pack, you know, containing information about, hey, well, you know, this is, you know, SIP the Federation, similar to the people that you guys encountered about a month ago on Super Station, and we want to make first contact, but we're really asking if you guys are all right. That's my bad idea. Oh, I like your bad idea. Mine, my, mine, the security officer is going to really appreciate it. Oh, we God. know that the, uh, we know that the uh, Imperium wear body armor and wear full body armor without anything. Can we replicate that armor and then beam down and see what's going on undercover? <laughs> um, but c certainly the um, the station has records of the body armor composition. Uh, masking your life signs might be interesting, but that would be a medical officer um, challenge. Sorry, what was that? Oh, uh, they're asking. Uh, they're asking if it's possible to hide in full body armor and appear as Vitar soldiers. Uh, what's the difficulty? <laughs> like five. <laughs> Depends how close you want to get to actual Vitar yeah. scanners. Alright, so will that be a reason medicine? Oh, we're not there yet, man. <laughs> I just threw out the I just threw out the idea. We're we're not donning armor yet. <laughs> he's, he's jumping yeah. on the idea. Yeah. yeah, when I heard the first stupid idea, I was like, okay, I'm ignoring all this because that's gonna happen. <laughs> wow. Well you said I'm... it was stupid yourself. <laughs> I did. I just I just wanted to out stupid him. <laughs> uh I mean, if all our ideas are stupid, then by default, one stupid idea is going to be our plan. It's not stupid if it works. That's true. I mean, it could still be stupid. Oh, well, okay, yeah. yeah. And work. <laughs> the other guy just has to be stupider. Well, in any case, if we proceed with, our, you know, Bashir's plan, uh, going he on says with distaste. <laughs> I know. I say with intrigue. Careful, careful predetermined intrigue i <laughs> you know we'd have to he, he would be in charge of the away mission additionally and you'd have to make sure that we did this right in a in a way that i prefer to be you know observing only non-interference which obviously will not turn out that way but you know like, singers crossed and we'd have, we'd have to be super careful Oh, I mean, in this case, it's not necessarily more dangerous than beaming over a bio narrow gel pack right now because, you know, we don't want to get fired upon. <laughs> and we also need, I still need to, I'm still not comfortable because we still don't know the situation between the Tugalow and the Vitaris Imperium right now at this moment. 
revealing our presence, we don't necessarily know whether they will keep that from the Imperium or not. Or if I might also we need to figure out a way that even if we were going to do it, to it, it's it's really a blind trust sort of thing. I want to be able to determine uh, if this is the same non-hostile Tokelau colony that's somewhere in this system that Cerberus sent back here to this planet. I mean, could you program the gel pack with no other information? I don't, my fear is we advance them further than what the doctor did. If we just put a coded message, are you okay? You know, flash a light three times, something like that. Okay, then. No. On the. Good. I, I actually know. I like this. I like this train of thought. In the sense, no, let's not make something complex. Let's make something more basic. Something. What is what is something that we could put in a binaural gel pack that will still give us at least an identification of the information that we want without revealing ourselves or causing some sort of incident? Incident. Something more basic. Right. Still give us some sort of signal. Right. So we don't. At worst cases, the Vatars find out about it. Without, without us contacting them first, if something was amiss. Exactly. We need, I, this current train of thought is finding a way to do this with, with plausible deniability. The Starfleet intelligence way. <laughs> well, I'd love to hear suggestions. Yeah, this is a huge brainstorming session right now, guys. Right. So. <laughs> this is like journey data around the table. What kind of message do you want to send? I mean, keep it. Uh, the Enterprise, I think it was the Enterprise, the Enterprise card, they came across a, a rip in subspace and they had to pump hydrogen through. They kept getting a message back. One, one moon circling, it was describing a, a hydrogen atom. Nobody else read these reports but me? Never mind. But it was something that simple, but it took them forever to figure it out. This seems to be quicker. Maybe blunt. Are you okay? Yes, no. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I'm yeah, thinking too. Think Just... think <laughs> you good? One blink for yes. Exactly. Or even just turn, you know, rotate the ship 90 degrees because they might not have the capability to, to do any type of, you know, illumination. I mean, probably not. And it doesn't necessarily seem that that ship is filled with any sort of large amount of technology in the first place considering so yeah especially if they are <sighs> that's probably not a bad initial messages end going once yeah go for going it. twice no, yeah. boom are you okay <laughs> is the final answer yeah, okay. that we're going with turn, all that debate, that's we go. turn starboard 90 degrees yeah okay <clears throat> It's uh, one of the first questions a, a sentient human uh, learns. Uh, sentient human or learns to ask, <laughs> and that's what we're doing. It's a new version of the Turing test. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you are going to use your transporters to beam a pre pro uh, bio neural gel pack pre-programmed with "Are you okay?" Please turn ninety degrees. Uh, yes. Yes, that is exactly what we're gonna. You need to program <laughs> oh. in no in case. <laughs> I or also take a negative answer as as the oh, or turn port if the no, no. Port and turn port. <laughs> it'd be really funny if is if they didn't actually know which direction it was which. That's what I was just thinking oh, too. Sure. <laughs> they can't turn, tell left or right. <laughs> turn to turn to the planet, turn away from the planet, yeah. something like that. I was I was gonna say turn ninety degrees or turn one eighty degrees. Uh, I also want to fashion this gel pack to be quickly biodegradable as soon as it's absorbed in, okay. into their collective, so there's no evidence. Okay. This style gel pack will self-destruct in 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> 10 
10 seconds in binary? <sighs> okay. <Oy. laughs> also want our chief engineer to draw to make this roll because uh, we all know what happened the last time I trusted the transport chief to do something. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I <coughs> will... Yep, so you can program the binary gel pack and I will allow... And Knorr can assist. So that would be a... Uh, control plus engineering with a difficulty of two and Kenor can assist with control medical or control engineering whatever she wishes would you allow cultural studies as a focus considering this communications of a different culture i will allow that yes all right control for engineering uh, what's the difficulty again uh difficulty two difficulty two okay and we do have one momentum. We do indeed. Oh. Okay. So, um, you program the... So, you program the gel pack, and you believe that you have done it quite well. <clears throat> and Kronor's like, uh, no, you haven't, but she doesn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Well, or maybe you thought you, you fixed it, but you didn't. <laughs> okay, this should be amusing. So, uh, the... All right, all programmed, Captain. I'm surprised you guys got me out in one base. <laughs> 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 They're going to just start, start firing on us now. Okay, uh, so Captain, the biodynamic gel pack is ready. Well, with this complication, we're not aware that something's wrong, gone wrong. You're saying GM Fiat, right? Yep. GM Fiat. That's what yeah. I'm saying. The complication will happen that later. Momentum, could that momentum be used to get rid of the complication? I think you need two. Uh, Oof. Andy wants to have fun with this, so. <laughs> That's why yeah. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, before. Before we launch this, I still would like to fashion this armor as a second option. Be nice to prepare for all eventualities, of course. Well, we could say that's going on in the background. Mm -hmm. well, the intel <laughs> your ship's dedicated intelligence officer is on the case. Okay then. Well, in that case, <laughs> let's 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 hit it. <laughs> all right. Do we have a ship's team? <laughs> I would assume there's some sort of infiltration expert who's ready to help out in this instance. I roll with the plot, and the plot rolls back all over me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have infiltration as a focus. So. Perfect. But no engineering. Okay. So for a period of time, you guys are just waiting for something to happen the transport successful you do detect that the uh, gel pack has landed on its predestined coordinates uh, the Vitaris fleet show no sign that uh, anything is amiss and for roughly 10 minutes or so the um, the Togolau ship doesn't seem to be doing anything either um, I'd l there uh, Liam Helsing you start noticing a fluctuation in the ship's shield generators. Ours? Our, yours, yes. Yeah. The, the, the ship's, okay. the Nighthawks shield generators. Uh, Captain? We have a fluctuation to the shield generators. Well, does it actually compromise our ability to stay in? Not yet. I'm concerned, and we should get an engineering team on it right away. And it's probably for the best that we back off a little bit. At least out of the, at least put ourselves in an angle that's out of range of potential weapons weapons fire. If uh, the Vatar ship wanted to start getting shooting, do do we know the source of the fluctuation, or is it? Um, I need to roll to figure out what the problem is. So that will be you figuring out what the problem is. Uh, so well, this good thing I insight engineering yep. or daring engineering, whichever. All right, good and thing I know my ship, so I get an extra d twenty to figure out what's the problem with the ship. Nice. I so don't do think it's a disco ball. 
problem. <laughs> not, not like last time. Uh, so that is going to be a difficulty of two. Um, yep. This is the shield, right? Uh, yeah, shield generator. Or shield yeah. emitters, I should say. Shield emitters. Does it count as power systems uh, focus? Uh, sure, why not? Okay. Okay. Uh, you make it. So there appears to be uh, something that is interfering with the power flux, with the power to the uh, starboard shield arrays or shield emitter arrays, um, di by diverting a engineering team to investigate. Uh, they uh, they report seeing a strange growth appearing on the outside of the hull. I knew it. Oh, oh, I knew it. Captain, we have a problem. <laughs> <Boy>. <laughs> Come on over! It looks like they weren't too appreciative of, of us asking them if they're okay. Maybe that's their version of a gel pack. Yeah. Yeah, but the same... Oh man, a server's all over again. Things I don't want. <laughs> Literally what I was trying to avoid. Yes. Oh, go ahead. I think you cut out there for me at least. Is anybody going to volunteer to interface with the growth? Heck yeah, sure. How are you planning to interface? Okay, As a right. science. <laughs> well, I know where. Let's. So, who wants to take a look at the growth and start and you know, uh, see how things are coming along? Let's do this in engineering because that's the closest thing I have to. Yeah. I don't actually have a hallway set for this. I'm going to have to rectify that. Anyways, okay. Uh, welcome to engineering. Who wishes to be here? to look at things. Well, the captain will be present here. Okay. Medical and science. I'm thinking we are best bet. Those make sense. I'm looking in the replicator to see if they have anything how to make flamethrowers. Uh, when people are coming in, I'm, I'm young at the younger engineers. Don't put it in your mouth, you fools. <laughs> uh, where is Kenor's token? I don't think she's been to engineering yet. We'll put her there. Okay, so in the five minutes it takes you to assemble yourselves and get down to the area where the growth is, it has already tripled in size and is quickly photosynthesizing more of itself. However, it is not actively interfacing with anything per se. It's disconnected itself from the power systems and is now just forming a greenish glob uh, dead center of the hallway. Okay. Quick, Helsing, I... burn it before it, it damages my precious ship. Um, no. Since I was so fond of the force fields in the hallways before, is there a way to put a force field around where it is? Absolutely. Uh, that would be the activate force fields uh, task, which is, because we're not at combat, difficulty is only going to be a one. That would be control plus security. And tactical systems would indeed apply. Alrighty. Making the roll now. And there's two momentum. Okay. Alrighty, good. Um, Turns out he's pretty good at activating force fields in the hallway. He's got practice. I can make a move, too. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> How can you change the music? So we have... Oh, don't worry. I got, I got that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. See, Thrash, that exercise before allowed me to do this task now. That practice oh, me. You should, you should get okay. a, a momentum for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to help you with your two. practical studies. <laughs> With uh, within all the within the minute, the, it has started to develop what appears to be two appendages, and is beginning to slowly grow a torso, for lack of a better term. Oh no, I've I've seen that type of animation on ancient Earth culture before. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> I think not it's called an anime. Station. And now. Well. Do I have the ability to sense its emotions or uh, any intentions? This would be. <laughs> let's roll a com 
Uh, presence plus command, I think, would be the best way for a uh, empathic check. Uh, let's roll difficulty of two. Oh, I finally think I fixed my, my d20 issue. Let's try this. Would investigation or pattern recognition count as focuses? I'll give investigation. And there's your two successes. There's a... Um, it's overwhelming at first. The static... Uh, sensation that you were researching is now experienced firsthand. B but after a 30 seconds or so of reorienting and breaking through, you're detecting not any, you're not detecting hostile intent, more like curiosity um, and uh, strong desire for something. Well, I'm definitely going to at least com live comment what I'm feeling while the rest of uh, the crew is, you know, watching this happen and standing a, you know, standing a gate at this force field trying to determine what's going on. Captain, what's your pose as you do that? Do you hold both hands out, sensing in front? Do you hold one hand to the side of your head? I think I put one hand on my hip while I'm actually having, like, one hand out. And while I just try to intensely stay on focus. <laughs> Comical, yes, but effective. It's worked for me. <laughs> they don't exactly teach you how to do these things. You're, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a filthy hack. Whatever works. <laughs> <laughs> so is the force field, is it like, um, like the energy fields? Yeah, just like, standard okay. containment fields, the invisible walls that people run into and go, what the heck is this thing? Sure. And I'm keeping the walls just far enough away from it so it doesn't <laughs> bump into it. I understand. Whatever motions it's making, I'm giving it a good distance. Okay. It well, I, oh, sorry. Go on. Uh, I was just going to scan it. <laughs> okay. Uh, it finally develops into what appears to be a... Um, somewhat familiar humanoid form and it stands roughly the size of a child for the time being but continues to grow it doesn't look like the the doctor from service does it no it does not there's a okay, distinct <laughs> it definitely looks human hu or humanoid but there is several diff there are two viney arm attachments and there appears to be something that could be akin to wings on the back, but they're limp and not functional wings. Did they have mention of wings from the service reports? They no, not that I have. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that's new. Mm -hmm. And it begins to communicate, um, but there's no obvious sound, obvious mouth movements. It just seems to be emanating from within its chest cavity somewhere. This garden has encountered your species before. You have uh, you have allowed us to gain, or you have allowed this garden to become uh, further evolved than it had been. But you are different. You are not the same garden this garden had encountered before. No, no, we are not. But we are. But you're correct. We are similar, and we have no hostile intentions. We, but I am, we I am gathered, curious. Yes, we gathered this. So we initially came here out of curiosity, and seeing the other Vitaris Imperium shifts in this sector didn't necessarily seem like it boded, boded well for you, your guy. Are you all right? Our relationship with the Vitaris Gardens is cordial. We are... We are regrowing the gar... We are regrowing their garden home by reclaiming those of us that were left behind. 
And what about the rest of the ships that are in orbit? Their garden, they are transporting several individuals. Also, they the this species seems to like um, what ostentatious numbers of ships. So everything. What about the satellite with the brain waves and the dome? That is not our concern. There are no Togalau on those. There are no Togalau gardens on this, these orbiting uh, station or this covered city. Well, it brings me relief that the Togalau are not under. But it does bode interesting questions for my mission. And since you're more familiar, would you be of assistance? We can. This garden will assist as we best can. Alright, well, I appreciate that. Uh, and I just look back to the crew and I'm just like, if anybody wants to chime in here, any suggestions? This is what we're going with. Is there anything we can do for you? We have been we have been treated well with the Vitars garden. The, we have been allowed to reclaim our lost our lost gardens. And once this is done, we will be escorted to the next Vitars garden in order to reclaim. Once we have um, cleansed the Vitars, we shall return home. When you say reclaim lost gardens, are you talking about taking back the Togalau gardens that are not as evolved as you in reclaiming them into a new garden? Correct. We have uh, we uh, we understand that your under, we understand that your understanding of our methods uh, is confusing and for species of a limited perception this is understandable. The garden gains knowledge by sending out smaller gardens. Over time, those gardens will either cease to exist or flourish in some fashion. Many gardens are left for a long period of time before they can be reclaimed and reabsorbed into the larger garden, and at which point their knowledge will be integrated and further decisions can be made. We re we do sincerely regret this garden's uh, er, we sincerely regret the attempts at uh, communication with the Vitars gardens proved invasive and lethal to their people. So when you say lethal, are we talking about Togalau lethalities or not intentional? That is not our intent. Uh, this gar the absorbed garden attempted to communicate by integrating with the primary processing unit of each individual. However, that proved detrimental to the individual creature, and the individual creature was for was forcibly exterminated by other individual creatures known as the Vitars. If you re if the Vitars has one of their people that has a Togolo garden inside, could you reclaim that garden and the Vitars person be fine afterwards? We have a we have successfully reintegrated a garden of such nature. However, it's growth can only be so much or can only be so large before it attempts to consume the individual's uh, primary uh, primary nerve center for sustenance well we still have a satellite in orbit and based on what you told us I think it's of the best. It's probably the best to assume 
those brain waves are still made up of the matais that you probably didn't successfully integrate with. Or they could be repopulated planet. That's a possibility as well. And they may not necessarily be too happy since that signal is ongoing. Well, we know the Shogar Lao is safe. Um, that answers that question. Right. That's the That was the important question. So do we make contact, Captain? I, yeah, we go down to the planet's surface. Um, but with the assistance of the Togolau, we won't necessarily interfere yet, but we will examine um, the process of them attempting to reclaim a little bit more closely. With their permission, of course. Your garden has assisted the Togolau in the past. Therefore, the garden shall assist you as best we can. Well, very well then. I appreciate that, and let's go prep for an away mission. Okay. Well, I'll still be here speaking to the Togolau, and at this point I'm going to hand things over to Commander Bashir. Okay. Uh, Captain, oh, I... you still have the force fields up around our visitor? Well, is the mass still growing and expanding on in this all? It stops once it looks once it reaches your height. And then I'll de- go ahead and say deactivate the force fields. We're done. Deactivate. The, the I would like to actually, before we break up there, I um, like to ask if it's possible to require like a get a sample of the Togolau in a polite way. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you politely ask, hey, can I get a piece of you? You, oh, yeah. Um, I, basically, yeah. I want to ask it, if I could possibly have a sample to learn more about their species. Just, just a tablespoonful. <laughs> <laughs> Hair, nail clippings. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, this, uh, sorry, you wish to procure a, a garden? Yes, I would. I am fascinated by biological life, life forms. Um, a, a small garden. A, a small garden to examine and to help with our exploration. This is acceptable on the on the grounds that the garden is allowed to reintegrate into the ho- into the main g- into our garden once it has fulfilled its purpose. Absolutely. I can teach it all kinds of things about our stop. garden. That's what I stop. That's what, as soon as as soon as the commander wants to start talking about teaching, I kind of just look at him <laughs> and it's like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> Uh-uh. Why? Didn't you pay attention to the opening log? We're not giving up information again. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh-uh. the information back. Uh-uh. Did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, we got all kinds of goodies. <laughs> Just oh, well, I mean, I... Okay, well, I know <laughs> I'm still I'm still a little... Obviously, I'm still slightly inebriated. Reading these reports are getting a little bit muddled. As sure. Long as you I got think that we information... got it all back. Okay, well, no, oh, yeah. that's less, we... less, less helpful. Yeah, <laughs> we got you back, sir. <laughs> yeah, we got you back. And oh, trust me, yeah, we got all kinds of goodies. <laughs> yeah, it's well, mind you, the information we got is over a hundred years old, but man, it's good. <laughs> You're the second one we unfroze. Oh, well, all right. At the same time, I'm still True. not necessarily great at volunteering information. I agree. That's fine. Um, but I can still teach them some of our customs and. Follow first contact procedures, but slowly. Yes, Cap. Okay. Uh, do you happen to have a container to offer the proffered garden? Um, not on me, no. 
<laughs> Obviously, the, I was on the bridge, but one of the junior I engineers absolutely... offers his his lunch container. <laughs> it's thermos. Yeah. <laughs> Keep you nice and warm. My warm. my sample is going to be made out of a sandwich. <laughs> can we uh, can we replicate Odo's bucket here? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, what have I started? I don't know, but it's fun. Let's figure out where this rabbit hole goes. Okay. Um, I'm going to assume that someone knows what a petri dish is and uh, and replicates one of those. You sure. sure you don't want an actual an actual planter, like an actual make an actual yeah, garden. That's that's not as fun. I yeah, I was thinking that. So I, I was going to offer my head. Yeah. Instead of taking him like you know on board the bridge and or whatever we were going to take him to uh, help with, I was going to say it's like we have a beautiful botany section of science that so happy. <laughs> You're cutting out something fierce. Oh, okay. Um, it is. Uh, it accepts the proffered container. One of its fingers just sort of dis- detaches itself without any effort or pain on its part, and falls into the uh, offered container. Sort of liquefies and refills, it, reforms itself, and gains probably an additional 100% of its mass. But it stops there for the time being. Okay. Um, okay, we'll get that landing party started oh, after I drop it off. Um, anything, f- uh, anyone else from this uh, contact? Uh, Lieutenant Knorr, anything on your front? Um, not really. I think she's definitely interested in the the life form itself and, and the Petri dish episode. And she's kind of taking all that in, but I don't think she's got really any questions or anything to offer very well okay so before uh since we're roughly about halfway through i'm all for taking a break right now uh so let me quickly set ourselves to our break screen and then we will come back in about 10 minutes about 10 minutes so 20 after the hour or sorry 20 to the hour or so and i will see you guys then Right.
Okay, welcome back from break. So we are about ready to figure out an away team and method of insertion. If I recall correctly, how do you wish to play this? Oh, that's on our first officer here. They're in charge of away missions. I would happily, happily. I would security. How he wants to infiltrate that. Oh, you cut out. You're you're cutting in and out quite frequently. I'm afraid. Oh. Well, do we even really have to infiltrate now? We have a representative of the Togolau. We could could escort us down. You sure you don't want to uh, resort back to your original stupid idea? I've had too many. I lose track. <laughs> I got the armor. Yeah, the armor was mine, yeah. Still oh. can do that and try to... I just told him that the security is going to love it. Well, at the same time, um, depending on where we beam down, we got to identify it. You know, how much of it is Togolau and uh, how much of it is uh, Vitaris. And at the same time, how much of the planet ex exactly is a garden? So ex exactly identifying what situation we're beaming down into mm -hmm. um, is helpful before we start determining exactly what we're what we're doing. Our our visitor might be able to help shed some light on that. Um, so combined with your sensor readings and the uh, Togolau's information. There are three uh, subterranean uh, city caverns that s are still quite heavily infested with the with gardens, and there are two that are have been cleansed or reclaimed is the better term, and that is now mostly repopulated with Togolau settlers. Uh, there's also the domed city, or you can just beam somewhere in the wasteland and see what happens. Well, I think the Dome City is a point of interest, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that have we actually determined what area of the planet the satellite is uh, transmitting these brainwaves to? Is it's the Dome, correct? Correct. I mean, get as close as any to that. Begin to investigate if the Togolau haven't have, are, aren't already in that. Uh, that's correct. There are no Togolau in the in the Dome City, and the Dome City is located over one of the Togolau free underground caverns. Well, I mean, that's kind of up to our first officer. What do you want to investigate first? But I'm just kind of assuming. Yeah, we I should would probably assume Go ahead. Go on, go on, go on, please. No, I was going to think that, you know, the Dome City is probably something we should look at at some point. Um, whether or not you necessarily think it's best for us to split or investigate one and then the other first is, you know, completely up to you. And that's not me just trying to backhand you away into authority i truthfully don't know so yes yeah. <laughs> i um, doesn't know but it's come up on your on your performance review yeah um all right i think that yeah the dome is very interesting i like to know what's going on um but i think maybe filtrating might be a better like if we're going to begin if we came to one of the underground facilities that has the large Togala might be a better way and then get to the dome once we find out what's going sneak in the way. Security do you have anything to say? What do we know of the of the Vitards? sensors how close can we get to them in our armor disguises without tripping any type of alarm uh, very little i'm afraid um you know that they have or based on cerberus and it gained intel they do have tricorder style scanners but their sensitivity is unknown you know the technology and they're very. Go ahead, you broke up. Uh, our technology isn't the same. Um, they were not. If I remember the report correctly, they weren't quite up to our technology. 
but it was completely alien to what they had. I don't think like whip up something that that could make the signatures on our equipment make it seem like it's their level. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure you'd be able to, but these people strike me as being a very paranoid race. Just look at how many ships they have here. So they're going to definitely have something down there. Well, uh, the the uh, ships in orbit are all Togolau controlled. So, I mean, yes, they are, according to you know, our guests, they are gardens that are a little bit more proactive. All, but at all the same ships time, are? No, no. Uh, all the ships are uh, Vitars controlled. Vitars. Oh. The Togolau. Yeah, only just the one Togolau. Yeah. Never mind. A very important distinction that I missed. <laughs> no, I thought I missed. It, it doesn't help that they use the term garden to associate for any plurality. So, you know. Context yeah, is king with them. Just something lost in translation. Yeah, it's just. They, we know that they're militaristic, very, to me, very paranoid. And that's coming from a security officer. He's awesome. So you're approved. Yeah. Well, I'm paranoid. Well, if we have the ability to... If we don't necessarily have the ability to straight up shield ourselves to what they may look like on their senses, can we, once we arrive on the planet's if we have the ability to ascertain or scan some of their technology, but it doesn't have to be um, something advanced. If there's any way for us to, I don't know, to the, to mask our signature as something a little bit more common. I'm, least... I'm thinking that along those lines. And if we also have another way, to, kind of like old earth had um, radar detectors that no one, things were being scanned, we have something a little bit more automatic than just a, we're not going to be able to walk around with a tricorder looking at it, but have something tied into our comm badge. That would signal us when we did get scanned. All right. Well, that sounds like a... uh engineering task to attempt to set up some sort of early warning detection. I could try tinkering something. Sure. Um, as in slight aside, uh, Vault Rani, your operations officer, does have a gadgetry focus. But, um, so if um, ah, if uh, Thishran wishes to try something, that would be um, let's see. It's if you want it to make it a temporary thing, that would be difficulty two. If you want to make it like a more permanent piece of equipment that you can that will last between missions, then that will be difficulty three. At which point, uh, Vault can assist if someone wishes to help with her, or so could uh, Vault Cassot, the other engineer. Either or. I think we're with temporary, right? Okay. I would knowing your character, that makes more sense sense yeah as long as it's good for this that. mission that's all i'm worried about right now okay uh someone who wanted to do the assist and then i'll do the um also spend a momentum since we got three for this okay i should die uh so what would this be uh pro i would think control plus engineering right. and if you have something along the lines of equipment modifications or security system Equipment or mm, not really. I only have like only have warp field dynamics and power systems, which I don't think is quite not particularly right. appropriate here. So yeah, Cassad has covert technology. If someone well, if <laughs> someone wants to lead with Cassad, that's a good thing too. Is engineering's four, and what would the role be? Uh, control plus engineering. Use a ten and a four with covert technology, so it'd have a focus. Okay, uh, yeah, sounds better That's than what Randy's rolling. So, yeah, how about T? I have that? weapons. 
I'll, I'll assist. Okay. So here's my assist roll. Okay, so that's one from Shras, and that's <clears throat> one from Kassat. So, there you go. Yep. Uh, he hands you a heavily modified uh, uh, com badge and will advise you that this should provide you with enough early warning to detect and uh, evade, evade scanners if necessary. Will it work under armor? Presumably. <laughs> we so we'll give it a test before we go. Can we also tie this to an emergency beam out so it could just trigger at the same That could be overridden, of course. If necessary, and we need to stay. Well, I'd be all for that. Uh, Less time we have to wait, the better. Uh, he raises an eyebrow and wishes that the captain had thoroughly... <laughs> <laughs> I wish that I thought of this idea before he had designed the system. Yeah. Shras Sh starts uh, grumbling about scope creep. <laughs> <laughs> Requirements creep, yes. I live it yeah. every day. Oh, God. Uh, for the sake of but story, I, sure. <laughs> nah, I, I, I trust, you know, I trust uh, Cassatt's rolling. So, I mean, it's it's some things to keep in mind for the future. Not at, not, not at the present. Indeed, Captain. Captain, mark, mark it down on his uh, performance evaluation. Oh yeah. I I think uh, a couple months from now we are doing just a single episode of performance reviews. I think that's a thing. Now. <laughs> I think that's I gonna have so. to be a thing. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so you uh, replicate a set of armor for each one of you, and a series of the early detection systems. Uh, now comes the main question: Who's going down I guess I'll be one right I'll I'll go in case you need to fix the attack okay, okay uh, that security yeah, I take another security officer if we can all right uh, captain is that well, actually did great a character that you'd like to bring along um, I don't necessarily think some girl should go on this mission. Oh no, but I'm so... asking you as a player. Oh, um, do you want to play security officer? Bite B. Watch the up roll. The instant she did good on the uh, the away mission. Oh, she did. She did real good. Yeah. Plus, she gets those extra of, uh, bonus points. Of playing Zod. Like, uh, the okay. The bully, our bully and uh, trio specialist. Okay. Um, Kenor, are you? would you like to head out, or do you have another character you'd like to bring down? Um, is it necessary for a medical person? Well, Captain's already bringing down a triage person, so... Oh, by all means, if, Unless... you know, you want, if you go ahead and make that suggestion first yeah. before I... Well, my, uh... My only concern is if, just in case next uh, game I can't make it, I don't want to be in like the middle of a situation. So I prob my character should probably stay. Up. Okay. Uh, then you are. Uh, do you wish to bring down a supporting character then? How many are? How many are on the way team? Or I don't want to bring too many. I don't want. I don't think it's a good idea to have too many people. I just like to have one. One character per player just so that everyone can take part in some form what uh what positions i, I heard security and engineering and yeah uh we have let's see I'm just security thinking. engineering and medical yeah yeah i heard triage so the I medical i haven't picked medical yet i'm gonna allow you to go ahead and figure out what you want to choose first We have an amazing new uh, security that did very, very well last time, and she would get the bonus points for being down. So clearly that means it's time for her to die on this mission. Yep. Stop it! Yeah. But we're definitely not taking the Bionars, because I don't think that would fit in the suit, unless they're, like, standing on top of <laughs> two of them. 
<laughs> no, binos are noticeably shorter than most humanoids, so... Yeah, yeah. That'd be that's amazing. what I said. We could do that, like, you know, the suit on top of each other. and then... we, can, we, can oh, replicate, we can replicate stealth. We could totally uh, replicate totally. some stealths. Okay, so there's those. Okay, so... Uh, there's also the... Um... There's also Ira Zinn, the chief nurse, who could go down. Um, Abril. We don't have a heck of a lot of support characters yet, but we can always build more as necessary. I still got to get on top of them. Bring the whole... Uh, yes, bring the So whole security time. and engineering for sure are gone, right? Or for yeah, sure... Are... We already have I those. Mean, of you could always have more. an extra security. Yeah, yeah another security would be good. Really... How many security totals going? Just one right now. Oh. Um. Yeah, I guess I can do secure. Well, I'll do. Me I'll take a. Me I'll take a medical person because if I get. Uh, if I start doing combat, I'll get frustrated. I don't like combat. Very well. Um. I'd rather. Yeah, I'd rather do scientific medical stuff. Very well. Uh, let's bring Zot down to the planet, and that just leaves something for. Um, a wolf dog to bring. I'll go grab the Loxley in that okay. case. Okay. And if I recall correctly, you guys have chosen the dome to beam down to, or to transport to, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, next question is, how are you beaming down? Are you going to just transport down? That was kind of the plan. No, we need to find some place. Yeah, like... Well, we need to observe where we can go to some place out of the way we don't just want to show up in the middle of the the dome square well romulan repeats please <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly uh, very well it's it's a fairly wide open wasteland uh outside the dome uh inside the dome your sensors aren't as um effective probably given the thick the, the thick nature of the dome itself, uh, but you're able to discern several um, gardens, air, or actual gardens, like not Togoro <laughs> gardens, uh, city squares, public gathering areas, that sort of thing. Or if, or if you want to beam outside and enter in through one of the ingress egress po points, then that's also an option. The people walking around, they're all in some type of armor. Uh, not easy to determine from space i'm afraid space uh, yeah everyone that the station met was in an armor that is true but then again right. all that the station met were military so right some advanced sensor suite we have i we, we need to see if we can gin up some type of very stealthy drone we can send down But in any Something case, to be working on later. We have, I mean, we still have, we still have the shuttle. Oh, we can remember its talent this time. Yeah. Um, oh, if only if it's stationary. Still, yeah, only if it's stationary. But I'm just saying. Um, in that case, we could. We don't necessarily even have to. I'm gonna oh, take the shuttle good. down and land off in the desert and walk to the dome. I mean, we could just. Why don't we just send a probe down? Because we're all standing in the transporter for wearing armor. <laughs> no, um, we could definitely see what they look like before we do this. Or, uh, yeah. Because I was actually just thinking of the Romulan situation. Where, because what if we go down and we don't carry any external weapons, but all the ones in armor have of a TARS weapon or sidearm. Or they all don't and we come down with them. Yeah. Little things like that that is going to get you tripped up. Sure. Okay. Uh, Captain ID. I know there's no hollow emitters on this ship, but how about we actually have the ability to take some or replicate um can we actually have the ability to just like fashion very some rudimentally or some intermediate 
how limited it is. Not, not I, I'm not planning to overlay them over our person, mm -hmm. but more so let's beam down there uh, with the armor that we have, uh, at least the knowledge that we know of. And if any case that we need to modify appearances, whether it be of the armor itself and, or uh, the site that we're at to be able to shield ourselves a little bit more better. I'm kind of thinking of the insurrection thing. I think yeah. that was Star Trek insurrection. The, yeah, you know where I'm cloaks. going with this? Yeah, I know yeah, where with you're the going. Cloaks? Yeah, okay. That's cloak awesome. field. Yeah. The cloak. So that's something that I should probably stat out. But yes, I think you can take that. And I will take. I will let you have that at a uh, threat cost of one. So give me one point of threat and I will give those to you. Well, I'll accept that. I'll I accept that. My book. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you all have, uh, they're not personal cloaking fields per se, more like a mass, sort of a image masking type of system. So. So we could keep phaser twos on us yep. and to be unseen. Yep. I'll allow that. Why didn't we think of this 20 minutes ago? <laughs> Good call. That is much fun. Yeah. No, so, no. The journey is the journey is far more interesting than the destination sometimes. And speaking of journey, Bye. so where well, whereabouts do you wish to beam down into the city? Or by the city? Or on top of the city? <laughs> Could on really stand top on top of, of the dome and look down. I mean, what is there a dominance? Uh, what were our choices? Was the uh, you said that that would be the uh, what was it the transit? Uh, yep. There's said. there's the um, entrance exit. There's a couple. There's a few uh, spaces of public interest. So like parks or monumental areas or just city squares. Uh, or there's on top of the dome if you wish. Or you could just take your luck and try to get inside one of the buildings, not knowing precisely where the what buildings do or you know. Or what there, yeah. Yeah. Oh, before we make that decision, just to... I'm sorry for asking so many <laughs> retroactive <laughs> questions. I apologize, but I actually want to... So we're wearing armor, but I assume that... Well, I'd like to actually additionally take a trip to sickbay and make sure we have our appearance uh, modified as well. Oh, I'm going to have to come up with tokens for all of you. No, I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's more threat. I'm, make... I'm learning. I'm learning that I have to specify these things that I'm assuming are that are implied. So yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I so promised myself. <laughs> I promised myself that I'd say captain on the bridge, and I totally forgot <laughs> again. <laughs> but if that's if that's too much, then by all means we can forgo it. I'm all for allowing Kassat to, or not Kassat. That's the weapons guy for um, Kinor to modify your appearances um, just to see how well it goes. I think that a uh, let's I think control plus medicine would be a good idea here. And any of the other medical characters can assist if they wish. Let's say difficulty of three. And if you have anything like espionage or cosmetic surgery or stuff like that would work out well. What was it? Uh, something medical? Uh, probably control medicine, I think, would be best. Well, Kassad's the only person here with covert technology as a specialty, so or as a focus. So. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but Kassad's also an engineer. Well, I'm I'm thinking out loud anyway. So. Um. Either way, Kinor made the. Oh no, Kinor got two successes. We need someone to make it a third. Right, I'll go ahead and uh, roll for Zod anyway, since sure. I, she's coming down anyway. So, control. Control medicine. Again. Control medicine. No. Def there you go. There you go. Nice. Uh, stepping, nice. stepping into the transporter room is five apparently very um, convincing looking Vitars individuals, um, some of which have slightly blue tinged skin <laughs> oh, I forgot we got the I got the antenna <laughs> yeah, how are the, how oh. are the antenna going to work on this I assume there's like ah, or... 
tuck them. Did they have to tuck them? <laughs> uh, lose them in the transporter. Hey, uh, you know how mm. that throws off my like entire. Uh, yeah. yeah, if I well, know. How about you lose some digits in the transport in transporter. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, decision time. Where are you guys going to beam down to? Commander? I'm saying outside. Okay. And then we'll walk into the main uh, vista. Okay. The... That's probably prudent. That's fair. Uh, Chief Zell dances her uh, blue fingers across the uh, surface, and you feel the familiar tingle as the transporter room will drop you here. So, welcome to the domed city. There is a... So, comparatively to other cities, it's not a massive facility. Uh, probably a small... T a medium-sized town would be a better uh, or definition... Uh, the structure itself has a radius of only about five kilometers lo uh, wide, and has a peak. And the peak of the dome is only about six, seven hundred meters up. Uh, it is covered with sand from the numerous uh, sandstorms that whip through here, and you're able to tell that it's a fairly old structure. Um, a lot of the sharp corners have been eroded over time in sandstorms. Um, but uh, Thashran realizes that uh, it, or Thashran's practiced eye can see where they've done some very uh, rudimentary patchwork on the dome itself. So there's been some obvious cracks that have been uh, repaired with the engineering equivalent of duct tape. But for the time being, it is still a fully functional city um, outside of one of the main entrances uh, you see in fairly worn script um, in uh, in the Vitaris language which your tricorder will help you translate to readable text uh, it identifies itself as a virilidin And outside uh, one of the outside of the let's say this entrance to the far uh, to the far right of the picture, there's a mag tra um, a mag train style thing, or mag mag train style transportation system that heads out for approximately seven or eight hundred meters, and then disappears into a mountain. Hmm. Okay. We were told that this is definitely the only city. The only above ground city, yes. Okay. Okay, so what is the uh what is up with the uh like entrance? Make it around the side. Okay. Uh so there's a, a grand total of five entrances to the city. Oh. Uh, each equidistant from what from one another, the entrance that you're closest to appears to be um, fairly well maintained, uh, unguarded. There is, uh, however, a quick tricorder scan does indicate that there are uh, recording and monitoring devices at the entrance, and a fairly uh, its controls are similar to that of an airlock. So there's an outside. Uh, there's there's a small airlock which will repressurize and allow allow you to acclimatize to the atmosphere contained within. Which you're reading as full class M, by the way. And that's that basically is to keep the sand stuff. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, also, the atmosphere outside is very thin, uh, so you can survive in it. You can survive unaided for a brief period of time, but you will lose consciousness. Okay. Well, let's go the door. <clears throat> All right. There's no like security checkpoints at the door or anything or there's no security guards, but there is a monitoring station. And I'm assuming you're fully helmed at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
as you approach the uh, door and begin to um, press against or press against the uh, valve control to crank it open, your uh, transmitter beams or your transmitter chirps to life. There is no there is no patrol scheduled to return at this hour. Please st uh, please state your status. Do you need any assistance? No. Um, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, we did have a medical incident, but it's fine now. Understood. Please report to Barracks Command as soon as possible for the and to file proper paperwork regarding the incident. Welcome home. Thank you. Everything's fine here. Situation normal. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> uh, see, even the dog is sick of that joke. <laughs> yeah. I, that's the only thing I could think of. I'm like... <laughs> uh, the door... Uh, cr the door... The heavy door cranks open f much slower than you wish it could and you make it inside the first era the first airlock, and it is indeed a sizable airlock meant for large roving vehicles that are the size of uh, good size like Humvees. So all of you fit perfectly fine. The door closes and there is a hiss as fresh air is pumped in and the bad air is pumped out. And then a small breeze is artificially generated to blow any loose sand back towards the entrance. Ah. And... Uh, the door will, the outer door will begin to close, and the inside door begins to open. <clears throat> I hate sand. It's cool. It gets everywhere. Mm -hmm. inside, okay, yeah. so what Where do we do? see? Uh, inside is a fairly sterile environment, and I realize I've uploaded the wrong backdrop, so I can't fix that at this time. So. I shall just describe it. It's a fairly sterile environment. Um, there's not much in the way of artisan work here. It's f just sort of like entering a downtown of a populated city. Lots of buildings, mostly clean. Um, lots of colors ranging from white to gold to brown to various shades of orange. And the largest structure doesn't appear to be any more than six stories tall. Uh, the your internal tricord or your tricorders quickly tell quickly generate a layout of the city and it all appears to be s uh, dead center with um, with a direct connection to the top of the dome through very heavy cables uh, is the largest building here it's the full six stories tall and it would take up roughly the size of two city blocks uh, it's pure wow. white, and in the and in uh, rotating holographic uh, text up above, it identifies itself as uh, pla the uh, Planet of X's Eternity Research Group's outpost. Um, I should also mention that you see uh, a lot of Vitaris walk walking around in their day-to-day -day life. Uh, you see males, females, children. Uh, their skins are all various uh, shades of orange or brown. Um, I have a picture of them here because this is the first time this stream is seeing the Vitars. So de definitely not blue and no antennas. Correct. No. Correct. Uh, let's see. So they are, they would look something like this. Nope, that's the Togolau. We've seen them already. Here we go. So we have this one here for male. And for females, we have this one. Which is not their proper tokens. I'll have to fix that at some point. But <clears throat> So a uh, fairly e elongated head. Uh, some are pointy, some are a little more rounded. B bony ridges with 
Uh, the sides appear to be a natural pigment. That's not dye or face paint. And they lack facial hair. <laughs> so much wig. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we keep our helmets on. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Do are there other people with helmets on? There are several. Yeah, just ask. Uh, there are several. Um, mostly they they do appear to be in full military uniform. And you also notice that the ones not in uniforms, which for the time being I'll just call civilians, are either giving wide berth, wide berth to the military, or are at, if they have to get close, they do show some form of deference, such as bow, a s slight nod, or a very quick curtsy. Is it... Fear, respect, or just it habit? Would, it would appear to be respect. Okay. So these officers are helpful, but also a bit conspicuous. Fair enough. All right. If, if they're if the people the the ones who are being bowed to, do they return a bow? Um, many do not. Some just give a shallow nod and move on with their day. Okay. All right. Let's head to that big, tall building. The it was labeled the Eternity Corporation. Uh, the Eternity uh -huh. Research Process. The Eternity Research Group. I don't nice. remember. Did we come across any of that in the information from Cerebus? No, but assuming the information what we have is probably that is their re-life cycle. That's um, what I was thinking. Some form of altered carbon. <laughs> yep. Well, investigating is probably going to be the most difficult part, but... You know, orders are orders. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go see. As I say, we can either we can either go there first, or we can go down and check on the uh, Tobolau. Those are our two main missions to get done. Well, uh, I as sorry, GM reminder: there are no Tobolau here. Well, the yeah, the fungus themselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's there are, no species, yeah. but the what they're doing to them down there, the fungus itself. Mm -hmm. Are there any computer terminals or anything uh, there, out in the open? There are a few. Um, most of them seem to be programmed with 24-7 uh, uh, news broadcasts. Well, maybe not 24-7, but that's what they're displaying. So current news and events, other news from the Empire. For, so How... How difficult oh. would it be to hack into system and try to pull up data without being too conspicuous? Well, you'd have to find a secluded terminal first, and then you'd have to understand, get a understanding of their security systems before you are recognized. What do you guys think? I think that might be a decent lead and start. Well... As long as they can find something secure and not in a public place like this, yeah. I agree. I wouldn't mind seeing some of their news to say a little bit more about the Empire myself. But yeah, um, let's find a terminal, and if you feel up to it, we'll give it a show. Okay, uh, so this is going to be... Let's do a sensors plus science on this. Um, okay. So if you have something along the lines of targeted scans or uh, what's geography or city layouts or something like that to pinpoint a suitable location, uh, this will be a difficulty two, and I'm going to spend some threat to increase the complication range 18 to 20. I have archaeology, cybernetics, xenobiology, xenobotany. Infectious diseases, linguistics. So I can. I don't have any focuses yeah. that are going <laughs> to jump on this one. 
Oh, I should also mention that this is a scene change, so you guys drop one. There's a button. Yeah, I have covert ops and infiltration. Ooh, either of those would work. That works better than me. Possibly use a security as a focus? I mean, as a discipline? Yeah, I think that's a good one for this instance, sure. Um, use a momentum as well? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. All right, I'll get rid of... Get rid of one for the scene change, and then, yeah, use one. Man, Eric did such a good job keeping track of the momentum. Yeah. There's my second one for the, the role. Excellent. And control security? Control security, yes, please. Well, there's the two successes you need. Alrighty. Oh, <laughs> so you find a uh, your scans tell you of a uh, terminal system that appears to have been installed in a half constructed building not too far away. Uh, so getting to it won't be too much of a problem. And pretending to be on patrol or something and just ensuring that the structure itself is still secure probably also not much of a problem yeah so there's not much in the way of civilian traffic up there and also not much in the way of military x all right uh so on your way over there uh, there is a uh you are quick your party is quickly interrupted by a female Vitars, um, who says, Excuse me, uh, lords. Uh, excuse me, guards. Uh, my daughter wishes to offer you a token of her uh, respect. And the little, d and indeed, there is a tiny Vitars daughter who wishes to offer you guys a small bouquet of flowers. Okay, I will take I will. the. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take ahead. it and nod to the little girl and pat her on the head. She seems extremely happy with the uh, that you have accepted the gift, and her mother just does a deeper than normal curtsy. As it would have been really funny if that was a big social taboo to touch someone on the head. <laughs> Right. They, they, they have no hair up there. You just want to rub their heads. <laughs> nuggies. Just just nuggies. Yeah. Hey, you little you little scamp. <laughs> so now I'm leading a patrol with a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> if, if you hold it close to you, it's hidden by the hollow field. <laughs> I mean, now you can put in your head and tuck the antennas into it. <laughs> yeah, a little bouquet. Uh, okay, yes, I pat the little scamp and I, I nod to the mother. And we continue our patrol. Very well. Uh, you reach the uh, skeleton of the uh, construction. And it's not, it's not long before uh, Liam Helsing pinpoints where this terminal's uh, interface lies. It's a fairly primitive one, uh, just because it's more of a placeholder for a full system at some point, but not yet. Uh, so this is where you're uh, attempting to hack in, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. Go for it. So anything, anything specific you guys want me to look for? It's like just general stuff about how the city functions. City function is good. Anything you can pull up, I'd be happy to have. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll look over, look, um, just general information about the city and, and how things work here. All right. So that will be a... a insight? Yeah, that would be an insight plus security role because you're trying to hack into a computer. Okay. Use yeah. the momentum. Yeah, I'll use the momentum. Uh, difficulty uh, and two. Focus. Sorry, difficulty focus. two, I should say. Okay. Uh, focus cultural studies? That's... That might be 
applicable once you break in, but right now we're trying in more of an encryption okay, just security it. systems yeah. kind of okay. thing. So inside plus security, all right. So I'll use momentum. Uh, oops, Anybody see. assist? Uh, yes, one person can assist. Inside okay. security as well. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, so that is already one extra momentum. Yep. Nice. So that momentum you spent, you get right back. I'll go ahead and go for the assistance. Have a focus. Okay. I say that in. Okay. There you go. Excellent. Yes. Momentum. Okay. So two momentum. Excellent. Yeah. So you. Yep. You spent the one and you get two. Cool. You're back to two momentum. Okay. Now is when you can start doing your cultural studies stuff. Okay. So this will be uh, so... in, uh, insight plus. Science, I believe, would be the best one to use here. Oof, I'm not good at science. Uh, possibly insight plus con, because for whatever reason, con can be used for. I'm even worse at con. Okay. Insight science. <laughs> All, right. Then. All right. Uh, I'll uh, stand of... over his shoulder and give him a little assistance. Okay. I was I was one momentum. Yeah. Uh, difficulty of two, I will say. There you go again. That. Okay. Okay. And there's that one momentum right back. All right. <clears throat> uh, so you're able to gather some uh, interesting, at least within this particular uh, dome or city structure, you are gaining that this is primarily a working town with um, uh, with folk with most of the individuals either working on reclaiming the undercovered structures, uh, assisting the Togolau in clearing out the currently infested underground caverns, and the rest appear to be focused on the uh, Eternity Research Project, uh, which by now you've pieced together is the system that is in charge of downloading memories in, or downloading personalities into newly cloned bodies. Um, there is no official government on this planet yet. It's currently run um, by it's currently run by two individuals. Uh, the first is Prelate Karn, who is also the uh, head head officer of the local uh, Eternity Project. And the other one is uh, uh, Kervit Charmal, who is the um, the uh, military commander in space uh, with the space force and overall mil overall military commander um, anyone who's remembers their uh, Cerberus records recognizes the name Charmal as being the individual who made f first contact with the uh, Deep Space 15 so he's come a long way in just a month from captain of a single cruiser to more or less commodore of a sizable fleet. Uh, you are understanding, from your understanding, everything is proceeding on schedule. Uh, the systems are holding up well, and they appear to be almost ready to, quote, recreate the um, population for the next expansion. Wow. So are these guys mostly like a cloning society? Like that's how they increase the population? So you're just cloning? Yeah. The, um, if you spend a momentum, I will answer that question. Uh, Before you ask it, is part of that question, do they come back as adult clones or do they have to grow again? So we're spending momentum on that that total package of questions or is that a I'll allow that sure <laughs> okay uh, sure want to go ahead and do that absolutely okay so um, what you're able to understand and it is at, it's fairly public knowledge because they want their services advertised uh, once a Vitaris reaches adulthood they may pay a stipend towards the uh, uh, research group to have to receive uh, regular backups of their personality, which is then stored in a 
in quote the matrix for lack of a better term um this is and then once this happens they are free to cast off their existing body at any time and provided that they are well that their their credit is up to date they can either uh come back as a perfect genetic copy of their previous body or a new one that is tailored um and decided upon by the current host <laughs> before they pass away uh, ah. it, it, it seems that they are unable to it seems that the group is unwilling to active to clone a person that is up or that is active so you can't have two of the same person uh, but they seem to have no qualm in um, just ending their existence if they want to try something different. Interesting. Well, that's one way to do things. Yeah. Culturally, does that just apply to only the, the rich, those with access, or does anybody have... It's difficult to say with only this level of insight. Um, the, adver the advertising price is quote very reasonable, fit for a uh, fit for a commodore or a commoner. Yeah, because I noticed that too about the price when we saw the uh, documents that right. it is that they have to have enough credit to do it. And they have to keep updates. Yep. I also the thing that's interesting that I I didn't expect was the fact that it is a company that we're dealing with with their society. I can't wait to have the Ferengi discover this culture. Right. <laughs> oh God. So well, what's our next move, Commander? I was going to say, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can get into the lower levels and see what's going on before uh, um, before uh, we investigate any more. Uh, sorry, so you're heading to the underground? Yeah, I got distracted by that message, too, totally. Um, yes. Uh, yes, we'll head down to the lower grounds first and because we're really here about the Togolau, so let's make sure that the fungus is okay. truly being taken care of. Okay. Uh, now, are you going to hop on the maglev system to get there? Uh, sure. Okay. So you reach the train. Uh, uh, it's only about 10 minutes, and once again, you are not paid much heed. Uh, you reach the uh, train, and... There, there are a, there's a pair of fully armored uh, Vitars uh, out there. Are they armed? Uh, they are armed, yes. They're not actively carrying their weapons, but they have a fairly nasty-looking rifle slung over their shoulders. Right. And they glance at you. And... Ah. Ah. Craven, greetings. Is it your? T are you heading? Are you heading down into the? Uh, are you heading? Ah, are you heading into the undercrack, sir? Or, not sir. Are you heading into the undercrack? Correct. Very well. What is your patrol? Id what is your patrol identification number so that I may add you to the record? When we came into the airlock, did they get? Did they query us with a patrol number? No, they did not know. So, <laughs> you can attempt to bluff or surreptitiously scan. Or... Yeah. Okay. What would uh, be a bluff? What is a bluff roll? What would we do for that? That'd be presence command, <sighs> I would think. I have a I have persuasion as a focus. You don't need to you see can... his identification. They shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, is, yeah. everyone else is quoting Star Wars. Damn it, I will too. Okay. 
We are not the patrol you're looking for. Looking for. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, some, um, sorry, I just. We're trying to keep this one off the off the books. Uh, someone spent momentum to ask a question. You should, guys should be at two, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Yeah, you're. So, uh, how are you attempting to persuade? <laughs> um, we're just trying to keep. Yeah, the go ahead. If you want to take. Books. Okay. You should be able to just once once you place it on the table, you should be able just to click on it and hit the delete key, and it goes away. Anyways, um, so roll me a persuasion, or uh, roll me a com presence plus command, please. And this will be an opposing roll. Okay, and I will use a momentum for a third die. Good okay. call. I get take or flip. Um, you should just be able to I select take it. it comes back. If you hit delete, the delete button key. There you go. Okay, so you said uh, presence. Presence command. Command. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. Well, nope, they uh, beat you on that. I'm sorry, we must... Procedure is that we must require your uh, patrol identification number so that we can properly account for the presence of all mi of all military personnel. Despite can the I try to surreptitiously scan them for their number? Sure, you can attempt to. So that will be a daring plus engineering. All right, uh, I will. Sp Spend uh, momentum on it. Okay, last momentum. Uh, let's so call this difficulty two because you're trying to keep, you know, quiet. All right. Uh, I don't think I have any focuses that apply. Uh, I'm assuming cultural study is not applicable for this. No. Oh, well, yes, it's scanning. So yeah, never mind. Yeah, this will not good. be. Military protocols, maybe, but oh wow. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. That is. Uh, <laughs> We have our face. <laughs> you know, for having no focuses, you're doing very well this session. So that's two yeah. momentum. Yeah. Uh, you're <laughs> able to determine uh, their patrol ID numbers, and you think with a quick, um, a quick couple taps on your tricorder, you're able to modify your own suits to emit yep. something very similar. Yeah. Oh, we're we're patrol uh, three one four one five. There, three one four one five. That wasn't so hard. You know, quickly uh, press a thumb to one of their data pads and gesture your gesture that you enter into the uh, waiting train car. As we're going in, I I nod to him and I hand him the flowers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You would have they. You would have about thirty seconds in which you don't, you can't see their faces, but you know they're looking confused. <laughs> uh, so, well, well, I'm sorry. So While all this is a uh, go, go ahead, ahead. <laughs> I'm like somewhere up in orbit. Uh, Captain Singral's uh, Beta Z senses are tingling. Uh, it's time to hand out the, the piece of bouquets. I just got the bouquet. Is that the Captain Tingle? Just the Captain, Captain Tingle. Tingle. Like, oh no, yeah. something's gone wrong. Maybe. Don't know yet. Anyways, back to the plot at hand. What were you saying, Zot? So I'd like to make sure that uh, we actually still have um, connection and we have a uh, signal to the ship. Okay. So I just want to kind of like tap my com, well, tap whatever communication device my com badge is, hit it under, and at least if we get a chirp to make sure we are either still within our out of it was a bit spotty with underneath the dome, but now that you're on a train car heading out into open, open land again, you're coming through loud and clear. Okay then. Okay. All right, night, Knorr. Okay, so <clears throat> you guys uh, head out 
into the wild wastelands. And if you've ever traveled or, like, done a car trip to Vegas or through the prairies, that is pretty much what the scenery looks like. Uh, Expanses of brown, uh, different... uh, uh, sand being blown all over the place looks a lot like the pictures you see of Mars. And it's only about a two minute trip before you enter unceremoniously into utter blackness. <clears throat> the train cars enter the mountain, and once you're in the mountain, you proceed to head down at a fairly sharp pace. Uh, there is a small hiss after about five minutes as the train comes to a stop. And you will find yourselves, let's quickly copy tokens, you will find yourself here. A fairly expansive uh, underground uh, civilization where there are several um, metallic spires that are serving double duty, both as a a large... um, complex to house individuals or as uh, structural support to keep the roof from falling in. Um, All over the place you see artificial light generating or artificial light from lanterns uh, illuminating the underground areas and there's a few spots where the uh, roof has caved in to allow for, for a bit of light to stream in from the surface. So this is in no way a full Class M society, or Class M environment. However, that doesn't really seem to be affecting the people down here, many of whom are unhelmed and are wandering about without any obvious signs of distress. Uh, Zot, you would believe that the Vitar's um, physiology seems to allow for... um, perfect function, near perfect functionality in this type of of atmosphere. So, like, the society themselves, not military, obviously, Mm -hmm. but you said that they have, they're just wearing, like, normal kind of clothes and stuff like that. Do Um, they look like poverty or... Anything like that? Mm, not particularly. Uh, those that are not wearing a full hell, uh, full military armor, um, y- you do notice a bit of a difference down here. Is that most of them are wearing cloaks to cover their exposed skin or long, loose clothing? Okay. Um, A quick scan shows no sign of Togolau in this particular cavern. Can we... Can we scan to see where they are, where we can get the biosignatures from? Yeah, sure. Uh, That would be a uh, sensors plus science. Um, With xenobiology or something like that as a focus. Yeah. And, uh, sorry, I forgot. Difficulty of uh, one on this in this case. Okay. That's weird. Can't. Sorry, I'm having an issue. Sorry, is every everything going on all right over there? Yeah, like I said, I'm having an issue. It's working. Oh, you're starting to cut out again. I wonder if you're just having some internet problems. Maybe. I can try hopping us to a different server, but I everyone else is coming through fine. Okay. Ooh. Oh wow, that's uh, a lot of crisis. <laughs> yeah. You should, right. be, okay. you should have these issues more often. Uh, right. So that's uh, three more momentum. So you're up to five. <clears throat> 
Uh, so your tricorder isn't picking up any Togolau signatures in this cavern. Um, this is one of the five, of course. So this is one of the two caverns that has been already cleansed of the Togolau. They, their gardens have already been picked up. Uh, it's the other three that is currently still overgrown, for lack of a better term. Um, you do see uh, signs... Um, you do see signs in various langu in the uh, Vitars language um, being held or being brandished around the city, uh, praising the Togolau for their efforts in allowing this society to once again flourish. Okay. I should also mention that down here there is far less military presence than there was in the dome. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I still would like to head towards one of the caverns that uh, actually has the cleansing right. going on to see okay. how this process is done. Okay. Uh, so that's in a... I may not have fully mentioned the scale of this, and I apologize for that. Uh, each quote-unquote cavern is a separate geological feature uh so if you want to jump to that that would be a site-to-site -site transport oh okay i, I, I apologize on that front i may not have explained that clearly fair enough is there another mag train that would go to the different ones or um it based on your arc based on your on your studies of the planet uh, geology or no geography, uh, it does appear that there is uh, mass transit infrastructure. However, it's currently currently to the infested structures there or the infested caverns. Uh, those are not yet rebuilt. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm curious enough to. I want to see how they're doing this, but. Okay. Yeah, we'll do site to site. Okay. <clears throat> and because this has the potential to go either horribly right or horribly wrong, I'm going to ask for a roll on this. Uh, so this is... So if someone wants to roll the transporter chief, uh, Chief Shell, I believe. Or Zell. Uh... Where is it? Here. Yeah, Avon Zell is the transporter chief. And this would be an activation, so you can increase something of hers if you'd like. Uh, this will be a control plus engineering test. So, and of course she has things that would work as a feature. Or work as a focus. And I believe that this would be a difficulty of three. Control engineering. Mm -hmm. And we got momentum. Yeah, and yep. the ship, the yeah, ship we can do. assist. With, and uh, she's focused on transport systems. Yep. Uh, the ship can assist with uh, uh, bah, sensors plus engineering. You said difficulty two? Uh, three. Three. Yep. Okay. I'll go ahead and roll it for the ship. Sure. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Never mind. Uh, Helsing just yeah. rolled, and that'll Ooh, be okay. it. Uh, That's amusing. I... Okay, I guess I'll roll for... Oh, no, yours. Okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so Damn. that is... Uh, so Zell makes it despite the... And I think I'm just going to take threat for that complication. Thank you. <laughs> Our antenna are gone now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose, by the way. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, beaming out from underground is a bit tricky, but uh, Avon seems to have everything well in hand. As in between breaths, you leave this particular cavern and find yourself in a, f a very similar cavern, except everything is green and mossy and smells of mold. Holy crap, is it bad. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, again, wishing I had th found a better background than this for this particular background, but eh, just pretend it's like this except green. Okay. So, 
there is a uh, there is a single domed structure that is currently untouched. Uh, it's not much bigger than a uh, fairly a good sized uh, yurt, for lack of a better term, capable of fitting four or five individuals comfortably. Um, there are several uh, military personnel just out keeping an eye on things. And there is a similar individual. There is this thing that is diving through the green uh, like There's this thing. And it's diving through the cavern, much like Scrooge McDuck dives through his money bin. Right. Um, each time it dives down and comes up, it's trailing a, a lot more particles. And it is growing in size as it does so. So if we found the giant dragon, and it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. uh, quick surp a uh, quick uh, surreptitious check of your tricorder does indicate that yes, that thing is Togalau, and it appears to be absorbing and interacting with the underground biosystem. That's better. Giant vacuum like cleaner I had in my head. <laughs> I mean, it looks like they're doing pretty well. Yeah, and they're worshipping basically the Trogolau for helping them do this and reclaim their own society. I, I, just, I don't know if any other things we need to get. We've learned so much about them themselves. And I mean, we were, we're, we're on our way technically to their system uh, to get information and, you know, see if we can start a, the actual first contact with them. I can't think of anything else. I mean, I don't see storming the facility as being a logical choice for us. Or, you know, trying to... I mean, everything seems to be going well. The Trogolau are being treated fairly and, like I said, almost worship. So, they... I don't know. They're becoming their own society. Anyone else, like, should we just head back? I'm fascinated with the information that we've already collected. I think we've done our due diligence. I think everything seems to be going pretty well here. Yeah. yeah I agree. Uh, so, yeah, I'll well, contact uh, our Commander, chief and... Yes. If I may. I'm not necessarily so much convinced that we're con where our mission is over here. Although... Uh, the intel that we have gathered is astounding and reassuring. I think what we are forgetting that at least on this planet, with at least within the Vitais, well, you know, to make a semi-sideways or possibly on-point analogy, at least at this point, I'm, I, I wonder how corporate interests will continue to facilitate the Tongue Allows continued existence on this planet. Interesting concept. That's going to be a pretty difficult one to determine, though. We're, if we're trying to predict the future development of this, this culture. Well, I think what she's saying is that uh, the court trying to find more about their corporate society. Why? And is it what kind of we're all thinking about the if it is like a fight, like, you know, only the wealthy can get the treatments or finding more about how the corporation is run before we actually go and meet these people. I think she's got a real good point on that, trying to get some more information on the corporation. We you could stop one. by the town. Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Go on. No, please. Back at the other, at the Dome City, we had that one room in the abandoned building we set up as a monitoring station we already have access into the network and i'm sure the binars can work magic 
on taking that as a leap in and get deeper into systems. We just need to stick them in. Yeah, we can set that little building up as a as a safe house. You're in the same building, the same city where the corporate headquarters is. If need be, we can run limited patrols and learn even more. Well, I think it's dangerous to bring the Bionars down uh, because they are not going to fit in. We well, are you mean you kind of just uh, replicate some orange paint? <laughs> yeah. Never leave. They're oh, children. They're children. <laughs> orange they, paint they and never leave the safe house. Or we could bring up some type of interface that they could do any type of hacking from the uh, Nighthawk itself. That's more what I'm thinking. Could reactivate that panel and possibly just set something that we can download more of their information. Um, okay, so you want us to head back there and then I can try to set something up back with the, the ship? Yeah, I was going to say maybe you can get something back to the ship to send, like, connect something or you're the engineer. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. We know the location where we were at. So we can transport back Beam straight there. there. That's what yeah. I was just thinking. If we can teleport, transport right back there and see if we can get a connection going and get their information without get, get getting caught. I think that's a great idea. Okay. If we wanted to leave it as an unmanned site, we could always rig up some type of um, self-destruct that would, if it was ever discovered, it would just... <laughs> Fry itself in a race all kind of like a neural gel pack idea we had earlier. Well, I still think I, I still want to take this as a first contact situation, and I also want to keep the prime directive in mind because I don't want to interfere with their society too much. Because if we're found no. out, our first contact is not. <laughs> I just found no out. Trace. Hey, yeah, we, first thing we did is just fry one of the terminals. Yeah. But it wouldn't leave any trace, <laughs> ideally. <laughs> if a superb engineer that we have could rig something like that up. Yeah, okay. Oh, I see how it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lieutenant Command. <laughs> oh, I'm talking about the uh, the other one. The Vulcan. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I see. Yeah. All right. You're going to get a disco right. ball at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been practicing with those force fields, buddy. Okay. Let's call her up. We'll transport back to our safe house and let's see what we can get. Okay. Uh, so it uh, sounds like you guys are going to build a duck blind here. A what now? Duck blind. Something like Blinding with that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so let's rig up a covert installation. Uh, so let's roll. I guess a, it sounds like a control plus security or control plus engineering. Um, let's, I'll have you Do roll. you have? Sorry. Go on, finish um, here. And I will, let's have uh, three separate tests, each at difficulty two. Do you have any sort of values that would be able to help to use your determination so we do this safely um to hmm, to seek know. out new cultures and protect them greater good balances on a knife edge greater good would probably work seek out new cultures and protect them not Really, not really. Because you're trying to seek out new cultures and thoroughly infiltrate them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's. But we're doing it for the greater good. <laughs> no, no, we're not the Tau. As much as we'd like to uh, be. Yeah. Other than that, uh, my other ones don't really apply. I don't think. 
Uh, I, it was a thought. I just thought, okay, yeah. <laughs> if it help you through the track and, you know, because when I did it last time, I busted through and got all that information. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, now I'm focused on values and determination at least once. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless the security officer wants to give this a shot. Well, I can do control security. I do have a, a focus in covert ops and infiltration. Yep, that would that allow. Should, yeah. Yeah, and I also the... have the, the value too. Yeah, go for it, man. That's all you then. Okay, uh, let's. And have I can three... assist in any. Yeah. Let's so have three tests, and oh. I'm going to dump some threat. What little, what remaining threat I have, each each test is going to have an increased complication range, eighteen to twenty. Okay. So. So I'm gonna support. All right, I'm going to – I'm also going to burn my value mm -hmm. as well as roll. So here's my first support roll. Oh, ho. Ooh. okay. And that's Sounds with your – and in addition to your value, so that's fine. Right, that'll be – So that'll be one additional momentum. Uh, so you're at six momentum. You could cancel that complication out if you spend two momentum. That's yeah, I was going to do idea. that. Yeah. Okay, so you're down to four, four momentum. Now. So there is a brief uh, altercation with a pizza delivery guy trying to deliver to your address. And you guys realize none of you ordered pizza, so what the heck? Oh, but I really wanted that pizza. Okay, so that's the first one done. Let's have a second one, please. Um, I have veteran. Oh, and what's veteran allow again? I keep forgetting. That. Doesn't it let you get your determination back? I think you have to roll an. Oh, I think you have to roll a challenge dice. Uh, let's look that up. So that's kind of important here. Yep. Um, personnel. <clears throat> Thankfully, I have his. I have all the talents combined into one, so I can. One document, so I can just quickly look it up. Oh, nice. Um, until next week. Yeah, until next week. The Alpha Quadrant, yeah. Yeah. Well, that comes out next week, doesn't it? It does. Yes, it does. Um, oddly enough, I did not copy the veteran talent. Okay, that's being an idiot. <laughs> All right, let me look it up real quick. All right. Um, if that's not there, then that means untapped potential is also missing. Okay, I'll have to add those to my list. Okay, uh, so while he's doing that, we've got that there. How far is the tower away us? Uh, sorry, what was that? How far is the tower away from um, I would say that you are roughly... I'd say that you're about halfway into the city. Okay, veteran officer required... Uh, let's see. Yeah, so you, you roll no. one challenge dice. If an effect is rolled, then you regain that determination. Check, so I did not regain my determination. You did not. Okay, so that's gone for the session. Uh, so we got zero success from uh, Thashran on the second one. So if you can re-roll your next challenge. Control or, or security. Next test, I should say. I'm going to use one of the um, uh, determinate, or folk momentum. I'll get it right. Ah. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Okay, that is yeah. two successes, right? Uh, that's four successes, so two, mon two momentum right back. So you're up to five now, I think. Uh, your duck blind is coming along quite well. Um, how people are not paying any attention to you is somewhat miraculous, you must say. Or you're just, just that good of an infiltration officer. Probably the latter. You have this you whole know. urban infiltration thing down pat uh let's try one more just so that we can get the 
um, proper de proper electronic field and um, sensor sensor suites set up in relative peace and quiet. Right, can you use the momentum again? Sure thing. Okay, then that's one more moment. That's that momentum right back. Um, the Shran, if you care to assist. Oh, right, as yeah. well. Man, Might as well. well. Let's see if you can't max that momentum out. And there, you're now at six. So you have successfully created a duck blind around a half-completed structure. Uh, for the time being, it doesn't look like it's in any immediate sense of discovery, aside from a couple kids that seem to be a little... Uh, that want to play on the uh, the uh, the lawn at, out front. That seems to be a, the worst of your security concerns. Um and I am perfectly happy calling the session here, uh, and I can just inform you of what you find out from your prolonged investigation, and we can move on to the next session in a couple weeks, if that's all right with you folks. Fine. Sounds good. Sure. Okay. All right, so thank you all for playing, and uh, so our next game will be, will be August the 1st at 6 p.m. Pacific, I know that's when Gen Con's going to happen. Is anyone here going to be in Gen Con? I am going to Gen Con, yes. Um, my, I have not decided yet, but I kind of want to just bring my laptop and still like come play with you guys that night. So That's um, hardcore, man. I appreciate that. I, do you yeah, like us I, that much? Uh, yeah, I actually, I really do. Wow. I have a blast wow. with this. I'm sorry. I know, right? <laughs> notice, notice how I know way too much information about this first game, too, because I've watched all of them. And... <laughs> cool. Okay, so it sounds like we'll have enough people to make quorum, which is awesome. So I will say goodbye to the stream. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.